Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Um, got the new uh, fifth wheel out in storage now. Just hooked up a battery reminder, a 10 watt. Um, I'll put a picture of it here. You know, I I was a little leery about putting it in. It just um, when I first connected it, it uh, turned on the auto leveling light which I didn't really like I have you know the battery pulled to the coach the uh, battery quick disconnect I should say and that was still coming on so I I disconnected everything to the battery other than the solar panel and hopefully it's um, these are more of a battery minder they're not really meant to you know bring the charge up you know it already has to be charged up is my understanding and it just maintains it um i checked it uh right before i um you know hooked it up and the battery was full so just you know as a test i guess you never really know unless you know it doesn't uh for some reason the battery dies or something um you know or if it uh went down or or if you knew how quick it it would um stop charging or stop holding a charge uh and then you charge it back up and then put the the battery the solar battery ba uh panel back on uh the battery minder i'm calling it um that'd be the only really way you would know if it was, uh, I guess, working, um, you know, if it's a long period of time, obviously, um, it's, it, you know, obviously would be doing its thing. Like, I don't know how many reviews I read, talked about it overcharges, it does this and that, and, um, you know, we'll see. I, I don't want to start blazing through batteries, that's why I did it, because we've, this is about our fourth RV now, um, Everything from Class C's to travel trailers, now fifth wheel, a couple travel trailers. Um, and I remember our last one had solar, and it was very nice. The ba It always kept the battery trickled down. Um, never really had an issue in the couple years I owned it. Um, and I think it was a large part due to the solar constantly trickling it down. Now, this new RV doesn't have solar. It's wired for it. Um, but I believe, you know, we really don't boondock or anything like that. So the only time I would use it was, was to trickle down the, the battery. So I feel like, you know, a larger panel might be a waste of money. Um, I'm going to try this small one first. I'll, I'll let you guys know how it does. Other than that, it's been going good and staying really just busy. Um, we're trying to get all our medical ducks in a row. Um, the fifth wheel actually has to go in for some original, uh, work that we found when we bought it. I forget what they call it. Go, go to list or something like that. Um, you know, little things. Uh, well, one of the big ones was this strip of wood above the master. If I have a picture of it, I'll, I'll put it on here. Really weird. It was a uh, like a piece of uh, fascia, you know, for aesthetics, basically, uh, was missing. And that supposedly is in. Uh, stick it in for that. Then some weird stuff happened this last trip, guys. I, I can't emphasize more to uh, go on a test run. I know a lot of people have said it, and I'm going to kind of reiterate it. When you, if you get a new RV, it doesn't matter if it's used or brand new, take it on a test run local to, you know, for one thing, where you buy it, I think it's probably most is important, but to your home, just to make sure, because we got out there, and this is our fault uh, from the walkthrough. We should have caught this. One of the ACs units was actually out in the back coach area. So it was either in the camping trip uh it was and of course on a weekend 
So the dealer was no help. Service was closed. Now, so I called a mobile RV guy out. Thank God he was able to come out. And uh, these are, um, forget the name brand. I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, my memory this morning is kind of shot. Sorry about that, guys. I, I've had a lot going on just um, between the RV and, like I say, getting things together for the next trip. Uh, and, you know, are getting in for medical stuff, you know, and uh, getting cars and trucks taken care of. Oh, it's a Coleman, I believe. It's a Coleman AC 13.5. He came out. This guy was great. As a matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put his name and number on the screen. If you're in SoCal, hit him up. Um, this this guy had a the reason I called him. I had five, 145 five-star reviews on Google. And I was, I told my wife, I said, I'm talking, I'm going to call this guy. How could I go wrong? You know, and RC is his name. And really, for one thing, he gets back to you. He's just straight up guy, as I started to say. Um, very, very smart about RVs. He's been doing it for a long time. And gets back to you. You know, he couldn't make it the first day. It was fine. We still had, we have two units, you know, blessed enough to have two units in here. And used the front unit we just kind of left the door open in the mornings let that cool air come out um and then we would just kind of go back there watch tv if it got too hot um it was a bit miserable to be honest we, you know we did consider pulling out you know just because but then we didn't want to leave we were camping and we we're starting to enjoy it and figure things out um so we toughed it out and he came that next day he came out and he, it was a loose wire in there. And he said that during manufacturing, they have so little time, you know, when that's on the assembly line to get these things uh, out, the, you know, down the line, out the door. And a couple crimps later, uh, which I found on some forums, it was one of the issues that were people are having, but I couldn't find any real YouTube information on it. So I just, I didn't want to goof it up. It's under warranty. Um, grand, grand design was pretty good. Uh, we're getting some of that money back. And I'm going to still fight with the dealer to get the rest back. Um, you know, the mobile people now, if it's if it's a, like, a, I forget what they call it. It's high priority, you know, maintenance ticket or whatever. Um, it's expensive. You know, it's not cheap. Just be ready for that. If you got, if you have a similar situation, you're out in the field somewhere. Oh, I'm not in the field. That's military coming through. But if you're out camping somewhere um, and something major like an AC goes down and you need them out right away, it's going to be, expect to pay, you know. It, but, you know, what? that's how it is with these things. If you, if you get into it and you think you're not going to uh, have to fight battles, warranty battles and things like that, and it's going to be just an easy cakewalk on stuff. It's not, I'm telling you right now, it's not, um, it's, I've owned boats, a boat in the past and, um, it's kind of similar to that. It is. Cause there's always something, there's either a battery, um, either, you know, or there's a, I think we had, I forget what we had it happen on the, the boat that was, um, the outdrive, the outdrive went out. Um, Again, the AC went, unit went out on this. The last RV, we had a water leak, you know. Um, so it, it, it's stuff like that. It just You just kind of got to go with the punches is what I'm saying. If you, and if you are mechanically inclined and you can fix some of this, great. Um, you know, we've gotten, my wife and I have gotten a little better. We were able to fix some of the, the smaller items that we can do, you know, screwdriver, YouTube, and <laughs> a prayer type thing but uh and the other thing happened that we noticed my wife was actually pulling in the slide i'm sitting on here let's see actually i think she was pulling it out that's what it was and this was after this last trip we got back we were just cleaning it up and everything pulled it out and all of a sudden and she said she saw a screw or she saw a rip happen in the linoleum and then a little screw came rolling out like 
what the heck? You know, was that a manufacturing screw that just decided to get loose? And, you know, the linoleum, I love the linoleum, the look of it and everything. But, you know, it, I'm, it tears easy. You know, we're kind of used to tile at home. Um, you know, it's good and bad, different subject. You know, you got the whole grout issue you got to maintain. Um, but, yeah, it basically tore. And now that's going to go on the list. I think you have... I think Grand Design told us we have 90 days from the time we purchase it for all this little stuff we do find, which was comforting. Um, again, they were they've been great. They did they've done what they could. They pointed us in the right direction, uh, and we got some of the money back. Um, so I'm I'm not complaining. I, these are beautiful coaches, RVs, fifth wheels. Um, they've done a great job. That matter of fact, the mobile person RC told us that um, he likes working on Grand Design just due to the warranty factor. You can tell, that for, first and foremost, he said they seem to do a little better job, you know. And I, I know everybody's got different RVs, different opinions. I'm sure I'll get comments on it, but he said they seem to do a little better job, and they were easier to work with on the getting the money back on the warranty versus some of the other brands. I'm not going to mention them. You know, I want to get into that, but it was good to hear. It was nice to hear. Um, but, you know, guys, I think a lot of times a lot of these are, are pretty much similar um, as far as what may or may not break, um, the warranty hassles. Um, but end of the day, does it ruin it? No, it's still way worth it. You know, I was just talking to my wife the other day about, you know, it, it's interesting to get people's opinions, especially if they're non RV or thinking about get in, getting into it. Um, you know, everybody's got a little opinion, the little camping stories and everything, but you get out on the road and all that kind of goes to the side. And when you're out there camping, it's, it's really a, a great feeling, um, to be out there and camping, you know, and being away from things and just basically decompressing. Um, right now it's pretty hot out in the desert areas where we like to go. So we're, Again, we need to do this stuff anyways to get it in, you know, after we purchased it, did the trial run, and found a few things. The main one was the AC, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, we found an issue on the side. I'll include pictures, too, that uh, the, some of the moldings doesn't look right. A little bit warped on the outside. Um, it looks like maybe they didn't put either the tape on. There's like a sticker there. And it kind of bubbled up, and then if you look further down on the railing, it's a little bit, uh, it looks a little funny. You know, it looks a little kind of warped out. Um, but other than that, you know, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. We haven't found a ton of stuff that's uh, made us really regret buying it or anything. Um, I mean, we had little stuff on the other one we were dealing with, too. So you kind of trade... <laughs> stuff you're dealing with whatever that's called for stuff you're dealing with um i still i hear the used market's still good but it may be slowing down um it's a couple of channels i'll put them on the screen here that i follow and they one one shop has a consignment shop and he said they're starting to see more consignments coming in and typically those are people that are done rving it's not trade it's not anything else they're just kind of getting rid of their rv um, so I don't know what that, that means. I know the used market, we were told by the finance person that people are coming in finding used ones on the street that are more than what their pre-owned RVs are selling for, which seems odd, you know, um, but hey, the market dictates what it dictates. And I know it helped us. We didn't, we didn't sell it on our own. Um, just not great at that. I know people, some people are great at it. leave, leave a comment if you are, but we traded it in and we were able to get a decent amount of money to be able to get into a, a new one. A fifth wheel is what we always wanted. And we, we were, we thought we were stuck a couple more years in the, the travel trailer, but, um, by the grace of God and the market, uh, we were able to, to trade it in and get into this. So we feel uh, very, um, thankful, you know, blessed, 
to be able to have done it. And and it may be your time too. You know, yeah, maybe you're in a travel trailer or you just want to upgrade to a bigger travel trailer, maybe a toy hauler. We came out of a toy hauler. And it's kind of funny, I always tell the story. We we didn't have any toys to put in it. <laughs> um, we bought it from a family member, then it helped both of us. Um, they kind of needed out of it. We needed a, an RV at the time, and it worked great. And, you know, up and above putting toys in there, which we never did, but it's got a ton of storage back there. You can put that back down. It's great. We put it down on the beach one time. All that cool air came in. Oh, it was, it was a beautiful thing. Um, but it really just it wasn't for us, you know. So we, again, traded it in and went with this. And it's usually going to be just my wife and I and, and the couple dogs. That's that's it. We'll have maybe last time we were camping, we had a couple visitors, family members come out, which was nice. But they didn't spend the night, you know. So um, we didn't have we do have room for that, but we didn't really we didn't really want to go down that route. Worry about bunkhouse and all that. We just um, figure you know a lot of people turn the bunkhouses into like offices, and this one actually has a small little office area and the master and we figure we can kind of make that work uh, when working remotely and things like that which is a whole nother subject <laughs> other than that it's going good new tires i think i mentioned on the tow vehicle the the ram um that's pretty much it we have uh i put the covers back on these tires i'm looking at different storage options um, I'd like to go into cover storage. Maybe some of the key comments down below. Um, it seems like it's pretty important to keep the roof protected that way, but it's a lot more expensive too. So weighing that option. Um, planning our next trips. I think we're going to do, hopefully, this month a trip just to uh, maybe head back to the Arizona area. Um and do some camping out there, maybe catch a ball game, just now that more things are opening up, um, you know, do some camping, and, you know, really keep testing it out. We didn't have a whole lot of time, you know, with the issues, once the air did come on, um, we were starting to work through organizing it, you know, as we're, that's how we'd like to organize it, at least the inside, the outside I kind of do separately, I'll pull everything out and get new totes and things like that, which I'm working on that project. It's another one, um, which will include satellite dish. I got a new King. That's what else is new is a King satellite dish. Um, it's for direct TV, which is kind of a risk doing it because the it's non HD. I found it used on Amazon. I'll, I'll put a picture of it here. Um, Non HD, and they could be, you know, Direct TV could pull the plug on that anytime, but it may go another, who knows how long. They may still support it because um, a lot of people have them. So, anyhow, that's new, and I got a new tripod for it. Um, guys, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, this is how I kind of make the videos. I, I really don't. Um, take the time to um, do a separate video um, for everything I add. I just, I just don't have the time for that. Um, so what I try and do is, you know, when I get enough things to talk about, as you can see, I know it becomes kind of a, <laughs> a rambling mess, bear with me, uh, of about you know, the things that have been going on with it and that, that, and that's how it goes, you know, unless you're full time, um, and you're out camping all the time, you'll be able to make videos all the time. You got the time for that. If you have it in storage and you're constantly going back and forth to the house, to the storage and organizing and getting ready, that's how it goes. That's what this channel, yes, it's truck and tow now fifth wheel, but it's also, um, you know, just really uh, kind of the process that we go through. And then that, well, now we're going through the process again. Bought a new one. Got to figure out how to organize it. Uh, there's been a fair amount of, like today, I brought out blank, or uh, towels um, and some other items for the kitchen. Bringing some stuff back that we got to take a look at. Uh, this is the ebb and flow of it. And I put the solar uh, panel 
battery minder on. Um, but this is the ebb and flow of it, you know, and th this kind of has goes. Anybody can get something out of this, you know, please do. Or if you have a comment of kind of how to do it better, you know, checklists are huge. Um, I have a checklist that we use, especially with the fifth wheel. There's new, obviously a new setup. And we really lived by it this last time. I'm so glad we had it because my wife, you know, she does great indoors inside here. Um, you know, she knows how to do it pretty quickly now. And the, the, the inside's pretty similar to the uh, travel trailer as far as the fifth wheel, you know, slides and everything. Um, but we got outside, you know, the hitch is new, you know, the auto leveling system, all that. So we um, went through it together and made it work you know it, it took a while but it's again we used a pretty ex, uh detailed extensive checklist i highly recommend it um i'll put a link to it in the description it's it's not mine it's someone else's their channel um and great it's great there's so many great youtubers out there which i really appreciate you know look around guys i mean you can i do that pretty much every night just kind of as a hobby just looking and see what youtubers put up you know, maybe they're talking about generators or solar panels, things of that nature. I find it very, very interesting. So, and maybe you do too. So leave a comment for that. Anyhow, this video is getting long. Uh, it's been a while. If you're new, welcome. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, again, leave a comment below if there's maybe a video you'd like to see. I'll try and maybe do a separate one just for the solar panel, um, just so... You know, everyone can kind of see what it's all about and how it's a very simple install, guys. I mean, super easy. And I just crawled on the roof and put it on the roof for now. Again, just in storage here. So it's hooked up now. We'll see how it does. Um, so you guys, thanks again uh, for watching. We'll keep on RVing and, you know, sharing our knowledge as much as we can. I mean... To help people and you know do the same if you know someone who's starting off you know hey either point them over here or maybe you're going to start your own channel and just helping people out that's what it's all about more than anything else so it's a great lifestyle there's a lot of great uh you know when you're camping you'll run across a lot of great people that are uh you know they just they're into the same thing and then most of the people we found have been very very friendly so it's a great community. A lot of new people coming in and they seem good too. So you guys have a great day and we will see you next time. Hey guys. Want to do this quick uh, video on the Rhino Ultimate Tow Recovery Strap. Um, this is part of my recovery gear. Uh, you know, God forbid, but it, it happens, you know. I know myself years ago we got stuck in the sand and uh, it was a strap that pulled us out um, not not a chain uh, you know when you got a lot of weight when you're 